I want to try and show you how we seek to use genetic discoveries in my research program to improve the way we can provide care for patients in the hospital, and indeed internationally. And I'm going to illustrate it by a group of not very common conditions that are inherited and that have the devastating problem that they cause relatively young people to be at risk of dying suddenly. The first thing I want you to do is to think about the way in which your genes can put you at risk of disease. There are disorders that are largely determined by genes, and there are some that are largely determined by what you're exposed to in your environment. Most diseases sit in the middle. So if you're talking about a heart attack, usually if you get one of those, it's because you've had several different environmental risk factors, and you'll have a bunch of different genes that make you each a little bit more likely. At the genetic end of the spectrum, there are conditions that are almost entirely determined by a single spelling mistake in a single gene, and you'll know about conditions like cystic fibrosis, which would be a classic example. Now, I think it will make sense to you that if a disease you have is determined by your genes, it's quite likely to affect you early in life. So I'm talking about conditions that affect kids and young adults. And you probably know about this because you will read about it in the press, typically when it occurs in a young athlete or sports competitor. And these are two tragic um, illustrations of young guys, by chance just both African-American basketball players, who died from one of these conditions when I was first working on the genetics of this when I was at Harvard about 15 years ago. So this is a very shocking occurrence. It's not terribly rare. It happens about a 1,000 times a year in the UK. And think about the family when we realize, and I have to present to them, that this is an inherited condition. So one or other parent, half of the brothers and sisters, and half of the kids of the person who died likely have the same genetic tendency. Both of these two young men died of a form of heart muscle disease, which is hypertrophic, which means thickening, cardiomyopathy, which means heart muscle disease, we know for sure that it affects about one person in 500. Most people with it get very little trouble, but a small subset will be at risk of dying suddenly. And because dying suddenly in young people is fortunately rare, this turns out to be the commonest cause. So when a young kid at school suddenly collapses playing on the sports field, this is most commonly what's done. And it runs in families vertically down the generations. And that tells a genetic scientist like myself that actually we can use genetics as a powerful tool to find the cause of this condition. I can summarize about 10 years of work to say the problem actually is precisely here in the actual molecular motor in each of your heart cells. Now, knowing this, we can go in a couple of directions. We ought to be able to use DNA to diagnose the condition. We would like to also be able to understand the pathway of the condition and stop it happening. Why do we need genetics to help with diagnosis? Well, it turns out that conditions that are rare and sometimes subtle are very hard to diagnose in the population. You want to trace them through families, but you need a reliable test to do that. So you would like to use DNA tests to find all of these people. And I'm going to illustrate how we do that by showing you a family tree. And this is the way that genetics doctors and nurses describe families, we use squares for, for men and, and circles for women, and we will darken or bold the symbol where the condition we're talking about is present. So this is a, a real-life pedigree from a, a young woman who was 19 who had obvious hypertrophic cardiomyopathy that we found because she became short of breath. And we now provide a DNA diagnostic test for this and other conditions for the whole country, and we've had about 1,000 families in whom we have screened and often found the mutation. And with that, we can then work out what's happening in the family. So my last comment is to say that I would like to understand, and I believe I'm beginning to, the actual pathway that causes the heart to thicken and to have electrical problems. You're not meant to be able to read this. It's meant to show you that we think it's complicated. But we actually are quite confident now that we can use some new treatments to actually block or reverse the underlying treatment. And then, for the first time, we'll have a real mandate to cascade through all the families, try and find everybody with this disorder, in the hope that we can actually stop it in its tracks.